Welcome back, scientists. It's Cynthia here. Welcome to chapter two, lesson three. In our last lesson, we investigated this question in the book, Seeing the World Through Numbers. Our investigation question says, is there a pattern to the weather that we can use to make predictions? In today's lesson, we'll continue to look for patterns at other locations all around the world and see whether it's possible to compare places and make predictions about future weather. Maybe you remember back in our book about finding the range for each line plot. I remember the May temperatures where the boy lives were similar and the May temperatures where his cousin lived were similar. Both places, though, had different ranges, so the weather was not the same. Remember, it was much cooler at his cousin's house in May. Let's see if that pattern continues. The Wildlife Protection Organization has reserves all over the world for different types of animals, including these three primates. The ring-tailed lemur at the top, the Japanese macaque in the middle, and the golden snub-nosed monkey at the bottom. Primates include apes, lemurs, macaques, and monkeys. Orangutans, chimpanzees, and gorillas are part of the ape group because they don't have tails, but other primates do have tails. There are reserves for each of these three species of primates because the forests where they live, their habitats, are being cut down. When an animal's habitat is lost, it can affect whether the animal survives, unless it can find a similar habitat. The WPO sent weather data for these three wildlife reserves. We'll look at line plots for January high temperatures in each place and compare the weather. Let's just review some of the features of a line plot. This one here is for Asalo National Park. This is where the ring-tailed lemurs live. Let's remind ourselves, what do the numbers on the axis mean? And that would be that long line across the bottom. What are all of those numbers? What do you think each X means? If you're not sure, let's look at what's, what features are there to help us. Notice the title at the very bottom underneath the numbers. That says temperature capital F, which means Fahrenheit. So that means the, t the axis tells us the temperature. Do you see the subtitle of the graph? January 2016 daily high temperatures. This can help you understand what each X shows. In this case, it shows every single day. One other important feature of the graph to notice is that the line plot begins at 73 degrees Fahrenheit. The axes on line plots do not often start at zero. So let's take a look at some of our data. First, we'll use this line plot to find the range of temperatures in Asalo National Park where the ring-tailed lemurs live. What do you notice about the highest number and the lowest number? Could you give us the range? Once you think you have the right range, I'll show you how to add it to a temperature scale so we can compare each place. Here is a temperature scale we could use. Isalo only falls between 76 and 84 on the scale. So I drew an orange circle there. Now we'll look at another reserve where the macaques live. This is Yakushima Island in Japan. Already, what do you notice about the range of temperatures for this primate? If you had to fill in the blanks, could you find the lowest number on the scale and the highest number? Hopefully you did, now we'll add them to our temperature scale. Here is a new oval spanning the numbers between 43 and 72 on the scale. Already, what do you notice about Yakushima compared to Isalo? Here is our last set of data for a nature reserve in China. This is the home of the snub-nosed monkeys. If you look at the range for this primate, what do you notice? Let's make sure we add this range to our temperature scale. I'll add it here in green. 
Now, let's take a look at the temperature in all three places. I have some challenge questions for you. You can answer them out loud, you can tell them to a neighbor near you, you can tell them to a tree outside, or you can write them down in your notebook if you want to. If you look at these three places, which place is the warmest? Which place do you think is the coldest? Are the temperatures similar for each individual place? Meaning if you just look at Asalo, are the temperatures about the same? Now keep all that in mind, we're gonna pause on temperature and look back at the precipitation for each place. Here is the precipitation data for all three places. The numbers are in bold, so you can see Asalo had 311 millimeters. The next is 111 millimeters, and the one at the bottom is only 15 millimeters. So which place has the most precipitation? How do meteorologists figure out the total precipitation for the month so that they can compare places? For meteorologists to figure out the total precipitation for the month, they add up the precipitation from every day and find the total. Why do you think that's useful? I bet meteorologists who are trying to find the rainiest island for an orangutan reserve would definitely find a monthly total very useful. So if we look at our scale, we can see from this January data that in different places around the world, there are many possible temperatures. However, the temperatures in any one location all fall within a range, and that range is not the same as, as in any other place. Each place has its own pattern of temperatures. We know that a pattern is something we observe to be similar over and over again. For example, we observe the temperatures in Isalo National Park for every day in January were about the same. Isalo National Park's January temperatures follow that pattern. Many kinds of scientists look for patterns. For example, a scientist studying volcanoes might look for a pattern of where most volcanoes are found around Earth. A scientist studying bird migration might look for patterns in when and where types of birds fly for winter. Your next video will explain the second part of our lesson. Welcome back. Remember our investigation question. Is there a pattern to the weather that we can use to make predictions? Well, we have figured out that temperatures follow patterns in different places around the world. So we've answered part of our investigation question. But now we want to think about how these patterns are useful to us as meteorologists. To do this, we will use an app to continue thinking about patterns and predictions. When I'm in this app, remember you can always read the instructions at the top of the screen if you need help. If you don't remember, you can click instructions up here at the top left and they will pop up for you and it tells you what to do. Now, notice the numbered boxes one, two, three, and four. And you see all the ovals in the scrollable toolbar over here on the far right. Remember the features of other apps, you have a reset button and your undo and redo buttons at the top. So let's see what happens with, after we read our instructions. A red number or question mark will pop up as you move the oval. Drag each oval into the box that matches the number that pops up. Then use the pattern to sort the ovals labeled with question marks. Hmm. Let's just see what happens when I click on this oval here. Oh good, a number one popped up, so I am gonna put it in number one. And this one, number two, number four, number three, and I can use my scroll over here to get more ovals up. This one looks like number one. This tells us it should go in number two. Does anyone see a pattern starting already? Number three. 
Oh, anyone guess where the, yep, yeah, there it goes. Number one. This oval here is for number three. Number four. Let's see if we can find these with some question marks. All right, challenge number one. Here is your question mark. Would this go in number one, two, three, or four? I bet you guessed number three. What about this oval here? One, two, three, or four? I'm gonna put it in number four. What about this oval? One, two, three, or four? Probably number one. Let's maybe do one more. We've got this one. One, two, three, or four. Let's put it in number two. So now, because we started to see a pattern, we could decide where to place the ovals with the question marks. If you want, you can pause right now and draw all the ovals if you want to, just so that you can see how each pattern makes a difference. Now we are gonna pause there on our app and look back at some screenshots. Where did we place the ovals with the question marks? And how did you guys know where to place them? Remember the ovals that had squares in it, those all went in box number one. Ovals with spots or different circles went in box number two. You could say ovals with all the stripes went in box number three, and the solid ovals went in box number four. Once we got to the question marks, what helped you know where to place them? I think it was the easiest once we started to get one or two in there and then we could see those patterns. But what we want to remember is, are all the ovals in each box exactly the same? For example, if you just look at box number one, is every oval in there exactly the same? What about boxes two, three, and four? Are they exactly the same? I think even though the ovals are not exactly the same, there's a pattern to the type of oval that goes in each box. Because of this pattern, we can predict where the ovals with the question marks belong. Now we're gonna try a similar activity, but this one has a range of temperature data, and the information that appears is either the name of a state or a question mark. Let's try what happens in this app. Let's read our instructions first. The name of a state or question mark will pop up as you move the temperatures. Drag each temperature into the box that matches the state that pops up. Then use the pattern to sort the temperatures labeled with question marks. So let's try a few here. 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Will that go in Alaska, Florida, Hawaii, or New York? Hawaii it is. 50 degrees Fahrenheit goes in New York, 3 degrees Fahrenheit goes in Alaska, and 70 goes in Florida. Now is that enough data to help us build a pattern? We might need a few more, so let's see if these help us. 42 degrees Fahrenheit goes in New York, mm. 11 degrees in Alaska, 84 degrees in Hawaii, 83 degrees in Hawaii, 46 degrees in New York, 5 degrees in Alaska. Has anyone noticed a pattern starting? Let's see if that pattern will help us make a few predictions. Okay, here is your time to predict. 80 degrees. Would that go in Alaska, Florida, Hawaii, or New York? If you remember what we talked about in our last lesson about range of temperatures, maybe 
You'll notice this would make the most sense if it went in Hawaii. What about eight degrees Fahrenheit? Alaska, Florida, Hawaii, or New York? Hopefully you said Alaska, I agree. 45 degrees, where could we put that? I bet you said New York, so I'm gonna drop that there. And we've got 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Oops, let's see. Alaska, Florida, Hawaii, or New York? All right, let's put it in Florida. Now, let's think back. Where did you place the temperatures with the question marks? Remember, they went with all the other temperatures that were similar. Alaska temperatures were all between about 3 degrees and 11 degrees. Brr. Florida temperatures were between 63 and 70. Hawaii temperatures between 79 and 84. And New York temperatures between 42 and 50. Now I really want you to think, how could you predict where these temperatures belonged? If you want, you can pause your video and write your answer, or you can tell someone nearby. But remember to mention, you were able to make predictions where to place temperatures with the question marks because of those patterns, just like the ovals in the first activity. Let's think back a little bit to earlier lessons. The WPO only sent us data for one day for Blue Island, Arc Island, and Creek Islands. Because of this data, would you have been able to predict where the temperatures with the question marks belonged if you only had one day of data for each state? I think that would have been very hard. In order to make predictions, we need to find a pattern, and it takes several days of data at least to figure out a pattern. One way to describe the patterns of temperatures is to find the range that we already practiced doing with the primate reserves. Remember the temperature range for Isalo National Park where the ring-tailed lemurs live? The range was about 76 degrees to 84 degrees Fahrenheit. We can use this pattern to make a prediction about the temperature in Isalo National Park on February 1st the first day of the next month after January. Now we can't say exactly what the temperature will be, but we can predict that the temperature will be between 76 and 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Remind yourself of the temperatures that we found on Yakushima Island where the Japanese macaques live. The range was about 43 to 72 degrees. Now, could you say exactly what the next day's temperature would be? No, but you could make a good prediction based on your data that it would probably be between 43 and 72 degrees. The nature reserve we looked at in China had a temperature range of 35 to 56 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, it would be hard to say the exact number, but you could make a prediction based on the range. So our big important key concept for right now is, although the temperature in a place can change each day, there is a pattern that can be described by the range of temperatures. Different places have different temperature ranges. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna move into the last part of our lesson where we will look at the weather of Bintulu. We looked at this last time in another lesson, which is the city on the island of Borneo where our orangutans live. The temperature data was given in a long list. Luckily for us, the data has been transferred to a line plot so that we can see if we can find a pattern and make a prediction. This line plot shows the same data we saw before, but now it's displayed in a different way. Already, what is the temperature range you noticed? Find that lowest number and that highest number. We can see that in Bintulu, Malaysia, the temperature range is 82 to 92 degrees Fahrenheit. If you had to predict 
The temperature for February 1st, the first day after the end of January, would you be able to guess what number the temperature might be? Take a minute to write down your answer if you want. Now, why are you able to predict that number? Hopefully your number was between 82 and 92. But why are you able to choose that? Take a minute to really think about your answer. Try to mention pattern and range, which are both listed here, so that you know how to spell them if you want to write it down, but you can also use those words in your description if you tell a neighbor. As an example, here's something that I wrote. With one month of data from Bintulu, we can see a pattern to the temperature. The temperatures for this month were all between 82 and 92 degrees Fahrenheit. That is the range. This pattern allowed us to make a prediction about the weather the next day. Although we cannot predict exactly what the temperature will be, we can predict that it will be between 82 and 92 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's pause for a minute right before the end of our lesson and practice visualizing temperature predictions. This can help you decide what to wear or what to do and visualizing the temperature in Bintulu helps you better understand how hot it is where the orangutans live. We will use what we've learned about patterns in the weather to look at evidence from Arc, Blue, and Creek Islands in the next few lessons in order to write arguments about which island's weather is the most like where the orangutans already live. For your lesson reflection today, think of a pattern. Describe it. Explain what makes it a pattern. You can write your description down and then draw different examples of patterns if you want. You can also rewind and go back and look at our examples of the ovals earlier if you need some ideas for kinds of patterns. That's it for today's lesson. I'll see you next time.